you're wanting to know who's going to make the Raiders 53-man roster, you're in the right place. Coming up here is an updated look at it after the Raiders sign Marcus Peters, and they've also made some other moves as well. But today's show is presented by Manscaped, and plain and simple, if you got a bush down there, get rid of it. Go to manscaped.com, use code Raiders for 20% off and free shipping on the best male grooming products out there. So we're first going to start here at the quarterback spot because the Raiders have three QBs, Jimmy Garoppolo, Brian Hoyer, Aiden O'Connell. They just released Chase Garbers, for those of you that are watching this live. And because they released him, they're going to keep three QBs, right? Garoppolo cleared for training camp. I don't know how much we're going to see him in the preseason. Brian Hoyer, I don't know how much we're going to see him in the preseason. I believe it's going to be the Aiden O'Connell show the entire preseason, which I would like to see Garoppolo out on the field just simply because I want to see him get some game actions. You didn't have Derek Carr last season. Raiders offense started out a little bit slow. So these are going to be the three quarterbacks that make it for this team. And the numbers that you see next to them is just going to be me literally counting out the 53 man. So it's not the numbers that they wear. It's just me showing you who's staying and who's not. All right, Raiders running back depth chart. Spoiler alert. I'm putting Josh Jacobs in the 53 man. I believe that he gets the deal done. I believe he signs the franchise tag or has a adjusted contract very similar to what Saquon Barkley signed but he does he's technically not on the team as it stands right now what's really going to be interesting though is what backs this team decides to keep because as today I am making this video the Raiders also worked out Benny Snell and then they worked out the XFL leading rusher last season Abram Smith so to me I'm going to keep four running backs and I'm going to keep the fullback like if you're going to keep Jacobs you got to keep the fullback that helped him lead the NFL in rushing yards last season. If Jacobs is not on this team, I actually don't think that they end up keeping Johnson then. You're going to keep your third down back in Amir Abdullah. You're going to keep Zamir White. And I'm going to put Sincere McCormick on here simply because I believe he is the next most talented running back over Brandon Bolden. Cut him, save $2.3 million. He's better than Britton Brown. I do like me some McCormick. Let's go to the wide receivers now, which a lot of talent here to digest. Josh McDaniel said that he expects big things this upcoming season for Hunter Renfro, which, I don't know, makes me almost wonder, are they just going to end up keeping him? Do they trade him? Where exactly do we land? And what's really intriguing about this list is I could go a ton of different ways, no doubt about it, but I'm going to keep six receivers. And I'm going to keep Adams, Jacoby, Hunter Renfro. Those are more of your starting three receivers. And then you got your special teams guy in DeAndre Carter, Trey Tucker, a lot of pre-snap motion. I also know that the silver and black want to be able to have a speedster and stretch out the field. On top of that, Dorsett does have the connections with McDaniels, with Dave Ziegler from their years in the past. If you're looking for more Raiders videos, hit that subscribe button. But I only really want diehard fans here. I want people that when you see Raiders news happen, you come to YouTube, and we're your one-stop shop. I'm going to look down in the comments. I'm going to see what you have to say. Turn on those notifications, though. That way you don't miss a thing, because if you missed our Marcus Peters live show, shame on you. We got freaking wild. Let's go to the tight end room now here for the Raiders, where it's really just a battle between Horstead and O.J. Howard for that final tight end spot. And that's the way that it's going to be. This is going to be a team that ends up keeping three tight ends, Hooper Mayer are the locks. I know that Horstead made the team last season and has the connections with the coaching staff. To me, though, Howard's just the superior player. The only thing that might battle or impact him a little bit is his health, but Howard's the better run blocker. Horstead's the better receiver. And I'm hoping that McDaniels realizes we're pretty damn covered from a receiver standpoint. So I would rather have my third string tight end be a better blocker, and be a better red zone option because that's what we need. Let's go to the offensive line here. A lot of talent on the Raiders' offensive line, and honestly, man, a lot of good depth. I would say that this team has some of the, probably has one of the deepest rosters for an offensive line in the entire NFL. And Colt Miller, Dylan Parham, Andre James, Jermaine Illuminor, those guys are all locked and loaded. However, I would have loved to be able to keep you guys know how much I uh, love McClendon Curtis. Unfortunately, though, I had to go with a little bit of a different route. And I ended up keeping Colton Miller, right? But the one player that's really going to make this interesting for me is Alex Bars. 
simply because I know that the Raiders organization likes him a lot. Brandon Parker is a player that I do see them keeping for the simple fact of uh, he can play left tackle and he can play right tackle. I understand that Justin Haran passed his physical. I actually think Brandon Parker is a better player than Haran. But if you told me which offensive lineman do I think is the most likely to be traded, I would say Parker. However, I'm not going to do trades in this one. I'm just going to look at the roster the way that it is. So because of that, I'm going to be keeping nine offensive linemen. We're going to keep Thayer Munford, Greg Van Roten. It's okay, Chugs. Uh, the picture for Thayer Munford hasn't updated yet in our graphic system, so Chugs is waiting for it to go. It's not a big deal. We're going to keep it moving here. Colt Miller, Dylan Parham, Andre James, Natane Moody, Jermaine Illuminor, Brandon Parker, Alex Bars, Thayer Munford, Greg Van Roten. The Raiders are going to be keeping nine offensive linemen. So for those of you counting at home, that takes us all the way up to 26. And it finally updated. All the way up to 26 here for our Raiders 53-man roster projection. Before we get to the defensive side of the football, and I know all y'all care about the D especially with this organization. If you do really want to up your D game, head on over to Manscaped, man. We got 20% off and free shipping, but you got to remember to use promo code Raiders. Not only does it save you money, it tells Manscaped that, hey, you guys are watching the Raiders report, which, believe it or not, does help me out a lot. I'll always recommend the Lawnmower 4.0. I think it's by far the best game or the best tool in the game for making sure that your downstairs stays absolutely trimmed. But I also love Manscaped because they have just now started to launch brand new products all the time. They got their Beard Hedger, which is a premium beard trimmer. And if you think I have a good beard game, and if you think Chugs has a good beard game, we use Manscaped products, and I want you guys to treat your beard like a pro. I am amazed on the amount of people that don't honestly take care of the hair on their face, yet if I were to tell people, wait, you don't wash your beard? Do you wash your hair? Do you wash your body? People look at shampoo, conditioner, and they say, of course, I'm going to wash my hair. You should look at your beard the exact same way, right? Like, it's funny to me sometimes. I'll get back from a jog, and anytime I get back from a jog, I'm covered in sweat. And Chuck, he's sick, but I love him. He'll lick my beard. Why? Because there's a lot of sweat and crap in there. And I do think it's important for you to take care of the hair on your face, which Manscaped's going to help you do that. They have shampoo. They got conditioner. They got deodorant. They got ball toner. Bottom line is this. If you can't score like McDaniels in the red zone, it's probably because you're not using Manscaped products. Shout out to them for continuing our awesome partnership here on the Raiders Report with Manscaped. Now, let's talk about the D. The defense for the Raiders. Come on, get your head out of the gutter. First, though, we're going to look at the defensive end room here for the Silver and Black. Crosby, Chandler Jones, Tyree Wilson, locked, loaded, easy. However, the Raiders did sign Isaac Rochelle the other day. Malcolm Kuntz apparently is in the best shape of his life. Adam Plant Jr., the UDFA out of Las Vegas, has or UNLV, has really, really impressed coaches and players. But I'm only going to be able to keep four defensive ends because it's not easy. The more and more I do this, the more I started to think, man, maybe I should have only kept five wide receivers because then I could have kept an extra defensive end. I know that this organization likes Jordan Willis a lot, and even though he was injured through OTAs and even though he was injured through Manicamp, they believe he can be a talented player. So here are the four defensive ends that I'm keeping. Let's now go to the defensive tackle room, which the Raiders just signed Kyle Pecco as I am making this video right now. Byron Young's battling some injuries, but he's going to be making this team. Bilal Nichols is going to be your, no doubt, Number one defensive tackle on this roster. And in terms of the position battles that I'm going to be watching really close this year, I'm going to be looking at right guard for the Raiders, but I'm really going to be looking at defensive tackle, and then cornerback's probably the one that I'm going to be locked into the most. Here are, though, the six defensive tackles that I see the Raiders keeping. Nichols, Tillery. Tillery might not even be a lock. Adam Butler might not even be a lock. Nesta Jade Severo, they drafted in the seventh round, so I do forecast them keeping him. The name that might surprise you that's not on here is Matthew Butler. And I just don't think that they really believe in Butler's ability to ever be something special in the NFL, which could be another reason why they decided to bring in, I don't know, Kyle Pecco for extra competition. Let's go to the linebacker room here. 
The two no doubters are divine, or three no doubters: Divine Diablo, Amari Bernie, who you drafted in the sixth round out of Florida, and then Robert Spillane. After that, they might just keep three linebackers. Legitimately, it's a possibility because of some of the other players that they have in terms of like an Isaiah Polomeo. They like his versatility, and they might decide to keep an extra corner. Maybe they decide to keep an extra safety. However, I do think that this team ends up keeping Luke Masterson. Because of the season that he had last year, we had over 50 tackles. He stepped up big, proved to be a versatile player, also gives you some special teams value. And I do think the fact that they were able to see him play, and he did. He got better and better as the season went on. That's going to be enough for Masterson to end up making this roster. Now, let's go to the cornerback room because this was by far the most difficult room to look at. I want the Raiders to keep seven corners. However, when I do my 53-man, there wasn't enough room in here for seven. And I know that the guys pictured they're going to be locked and loaded. What it really came down to is, do I keep Sam Webb? Do I keep David Long Jr.? Do I keep Amik Robertson? These are the six corners that I ended up keeping. You drafted Bennett. You traded up for him in round four, so he's going to make it. Brandon Faison is a player that they gave $3.2 million to in his contract. And I know that money talks, so I think he's going to end up making it. He's a physical player. They really, really like Tyler Hall in the slot. This is going to be the number one battle to be looking at, no doubt about it, at Raiders training camp. Which cornerbacks emerge and which ones don't? My question to you is this, so, so please share your thoughts. How many corners do you see McDaniels and Ziegler keeping for this 53-man roster, I kept six. And it pains me to do that because I do think David Long's a good player. I know they like Sam Webb. How many corners will the Raiders end up keeping on their roster? Let's go now to the safety position. Marcus Epps, Locke, Merrick, Locke, Chris Smith, Locke. So that means I can only keep one more player. Do I keep Roderick Teamer Jr., who's a hell of a special teams player? Do I keep... Jaquan Johnson, who probably offers you a little bit more in terms of the coverage ability. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go with the guy they kept last season, the biggest surprise on the 53, man, Isaiah Polomeo. His related to Troy Polamalu, is related to Kenny Lee Polamalu, the Raiders' running back coach. But he's gained some weight, and from everything that I understand is he's going to be this box safety linebacker hybrid type of player, which is why I have him here at number 50. And then... Can't always forget about special teams. You got Daniel Carlson, A.J. Cole, two Pro Bowl players, and then Jacob Bobbin Moyer, the brand-new long snapper for the Silver and Black. That's my brand-new 53-man roster projection after the Raiders sign Marcus Peters, and they've signed some other players like Isaac Rochelle, Kyle Pecko on top of that. But who do I leave off my 53-man? Like, a lot of names to consider. I think the next time I do a 53-man roster, Chugs, I'm going to put the names that were, like, right there. You know what I mean? Like, these are the five players that just didn't quite make it. The roster bubble, the honorable mentions. So who would I leave off my 53, man? Please let me know down in the comments. I'm going to be looking.